the FBI, a senior government official, speaking on condition of anonymity, said both planes were hijacked and were flown intentionally on a suicide mission into the World Trade Centers. Again, it has not been confirmed by the White House, and um, all three airports are now closed. All three airports now closed. We have eyewitnesses on the phone. We also have Lori Stokes, my tag team partner. Uh, Lori, why don't you give me a break right here and uh, bring us up to date with anything that you might know, and I'll be down there in a moment. All right. To reiterate, Steve, and also to just uh, recap and to add some more information, as we've heard some witness accounts, as this happened at uh, 845, one eyewitness saying that they noticed that they saw one plane that was listing back and forth from wingtip to wingtip shortly before uh, it apparently did crash into the north side of building number one. And then, as John Del Journal just talked about a few minutes ago, from his eye and his expertise, being able to tell it was a Boeing 737 was apparently uh, the second aircraft that went into the second tower on the south side. As we also understand, as you also talked about, Steve, just minutes ago, all operations according to the uh, New York metropolitan area as far as flights coming in, going out, that would be N Newark, that would be Newark, LaGuardia, as well as Kennedy. All of the operations have been suspended thus far. Of course, that would be natural, seeing as though what has just happened in, uh, within the last hour or so. Jim Dolan, of course, with us here in the studio as um, Steve Bartlesey makes his way down. We have Jim, and let's talk about, because certainly this has all just happened in such a, a rapid fashion. Yeah, but it is, uh, it is typical in the way of terrorist acts often happen. You often see this in Israel. There'll be one attack, mm -hmm. and then they, there'll be one bomb explosion, for example, Lori, and then there'll be several minutes that go by, and, and emergency service people come to the scene and try to rescue those people who are injured and try to save those people who are not killed, and then another bomb goes off as if to kill those people who came in to help as well. It's a, the cynical way in which terrorism often works. It appears that that could be the way this has happened as well. One plane goes into the first building, several minutes go by, emergency services people come to the scene, and more, and then another terrorist attack. And of course, for it to begin and to start when it hit at 845, for us to initially believe this was an accident. It, it certainly let us speculate that it might not be terrorism. It could right. be something else. It could be an accident. It could be, I, I remember one of the uh, uh, people you had on the air, Steve, was talking about the possibility that it could be, could have been a dry, uh, the flyer, the pilot of the plane might have been drunk because the way the plane was, sure. was listing. Uh, so it let us think that that was a possibility for a while. Mm -hmm. When the second plane hit, didn't seem to be any question left. This was a planned, well-planned out terrorist attack, and that, of course, is what the FBI and the feds are confirming for us now. Well, Jim, it, it, we were just talking upstairs, and Lori, I know that you've covered all these as well, probably more so than I. Oftentimes, these twin terrorist attacks, they do happen in twos, and such as the, the embassy bombings uh, mm -hmm. in Africa. Yep. Uh, it, that's certainly looking like that's the way it was and in that particular case that was designed two explosions at the uh, nearly the very same time was was uh, designed to get the message out it wasn't an accident it wasn't isolated we have our fingers everywhere we can control your destiny and we will make an impact and that is what they were trying to get across in in the twin embassy attacks and uh, we'll have to wait and see what uh, what the message was supposed to be here but let me just point out and, and this was also the case in the original World Trade Center explosion Many people see those Twin Towers as an example across the world, around the world, as an example of American capitalism, as, a, as an example of American might and power. They are a very strong and very vulnerable symbol, symbol to the rest of the world and to the United States, and uh, that could be why they were, uh, they were targeted this time. Great point. And you have to look how meticulously this appears to have taken place as well. It really does. Uh, when the uh, world trend, this is one of those things, and we're looking again at the uh, second explosion right there on tape side, right? on the south side. Uh, during the World Trade Center uh, trial, it came out that the buildings were originally designed to withstand the full impact of a 727 aircraft. They were designed to uh, continue to stand if a 727 uh, uh, crashed into it because the 727 was the largest plane in the air at that time. Uh, and uh, so uh, this was well planned out. These were large aircrafts. Uh, it was not a mistake. And, and just think of how expensive this operation was. Very few 
terrorist organizations could afford that. Immediately, and not to speculate, but immediately Osama bin Laden has got the, the money to do something like that. But you automatically think, I would imagine, asking both of you the, the question, there are very few countries that plan suicide attacks. They may have other forms of terrorism. Suicide attacks would certainly send intelligence to certain parts of the country if they didn't have it already. Osama bin Laden, of course, is uh, the former Afghan freedom fighter, a billionaire by all accounts, uh, who is uh, maybe number one on America's uh, list of, of uh, terrorism exporters. Uh, they believe he was uh, involved in the uh, in the attack on the uh, on the uh, American uh, vessel uh, in the Middle East several months ago, uh, and uh, the embassy attacks as well. Uh, and yeah, he springs immediately to mind. Uh, we have uh, also. Let's go back to John Del Journal. John, you're still uh, obviously having to keep your distance, but bring us up to date. John, are you there? John is uh, certainly been here. He's taken our uh, signal. They were telling me off the radio. All right, we're uh, understanding. Once that again, we're invest. live over the west oh. side of Manhattan. We're up around 79th Street, about five miles north of the World Trade Center. And again, to recap the events here this morning, as we are assembling them mostly from eyewitness reports. One of our sister helicopters for Metro Traffic was flying in the vicinity here around 8.45 this morning when the pilot witnessed an airplane crash into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. That airplane was traveling from north to south and the pilot believes that it was an ATR aircraft. That's a commuter type airplane. It's a twin engine prop airplane that can carry anywhere between 50 people up over 100 people for that aircraft. That airplane crashed flush into the north side of World Trade Center, of the north building of the World Trade Center, and the, the building proceeded to go up in flames. The top 20 floors of the building currently engulfed in smoke. Approximately 15 Jackson, minutes right after that occurred, we were en route to the scene and an airplane passed over our head from south to north. And this was a Boeing 737 aircraft that crashed flush into the south side of the south building. So we have two airplanes that struck each building of the World Trade Center. The north building was struck on approximately the 80th floor. My estimation is that the south building, which is what you're looking at now, that was struck at approximately between the 50th and 60th floors. Again, initial eyewitness reports said that these first airplanes, the first one flew directly over Manhattan and right into the north face of the World Trade Center building. Meanwhile, these fires obviously very difficult to extinguish for the fire department. I'm not even sure if they can get equipment up that high in the building. This smoke, obviously, on a beautiful clear day in Manhattan, is visible for miles, for miles and miles around. It is also worth noting that as far as we can tell, the airspace around New York City, as far as commercial traffic goes, that airspace has been shut down. All operations at Newark International Airport, John F. Kennedy International Airport, and LaGuardia Airport, those operations have been, they've been ground to a halt by the FAA. Also, Teterboro Airport for local commuter traffic, that has been closed down as well. So it appears as though all air traffic in the vicinity is immediately shut down. The fires continue to burn out of control in World Trade Center number one and World Trade Center number two. John, now let me ask you a question. You had said the 737, pardon me on my ignorance, how many folks does that uh, seat, do you know? 37 aircraft, and you have to forgive me because I'm working on the radio equipment to hear your questions because obviously, right. Uh, many of the, much of the media equipment in New York is based right here in the World Trade Center. So a lot of the local TV signals, radio signals, two-way radio, AM, FM channels, many of those signals in New York City have... Two airplanes. Uh, all right, right now we're going to interrupt. We're going to go to the, the president. He's Center talking about what has just happened. In an listen. apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the vice president, to the governor of New York, to the director of the FBI, and I've ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the f and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. President clearly shaken, I think one can say, um, confirming what we think we all knew, which was the two aircraft 
um, in an act of terrorism, uh, crashed into the twin trade towners. Nobody was quite certain about the first one uh, at the very outset, but the president absolutely, having talked to the vice president, the governor of New York, the director of the FBI, uh, now believing and confirming that we have two terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center, and the president saying the two things which a president must say at a moment like this, terrorism will not stand, uh, which is an important thing for him to say, but not always necessarily effective, and God bless the victims and their families. John Miller, what are you picking All up? All right, we were just page? listening to Peter Jennings, uh, ABC newsman, talking about what the President of the United States just said, as he not only, of course, asked for a moment of silence, as we have yet to get any casualties in this matter, with two explosions caused by planes going into both towers of the World Trade Center. But the President did talk about that, uh, that the government will produce all resources that it has in order to not only comfort the victims, should there be obviously some also but to get down to the matter of this and those who perhaps if indeed this was an act of terrorism who caused this on the phone we have an eyewitness is that correct yeah jim gartenberg joins us he was on the 86th floor of uh, i'm not sure which tower was it the east, north or south jim it's the north it's the world trade center one and it's not was i am here and i'm stuck right now now you are you above Jim or below? I have no idea. I have no idea where the plane hit. I'm, it's my understanding that it's a plane. Jim, um, there are two planes. One went into one tower. One went into the other tower. What do, What do you see around you? I mean, are you in Are you in smoke? Are you in fire? I mean, the, the first thing that I want to make clear is that I'm stuck on the 86th floor. Um, a fire door has trapped us. Debris has fallen around us, and part of the core of the building is blown out. How many people are with you, Jim? I'm with one other person, and I'm told that people are aware of this. I'm on the 86th floor on the east side of the building facing the East River. And what time if did I'm you get... I'm on the air. I want to tell anybody that has a family member that may be in the building that the situation is under control for the moment, and the danger has not increased. So please, all family members, take it easy. Jim, can, in, uh, one of our producers, too, if you'd call uh, NYPD and let them know exactly where Jim and that other person is trying to 86 Sixth floor. 86th floor on the east side of the building facing the river. Okay, thank you, Jim. Um, there are two of time, us here. Okay, Jim, we'll try to, to, uh, to try to make sure that we can alert everybody, and, and also it's good that you did mention that families should, to some extent, uh, to have some calm right now. What time did you get to work? I got to work around 8 o'clock this morning, and, and I think this happened around 8.45. It did. Describe mm -hmm. what you felt. I felt in a, I felt just the whole building, I heard a noise, felt the whole building shake and saw glass blown out. The glass on my floor was blown out from the inside of the building out mm -hmm. rather than the exterior windows being blown out. So and what the glass you... fully shattered and just the core of the building, uh, the interior core of part of the building collapsed. Hello? Uh, we just want to pass it, Jim, hang right there with one second. Uh, for folks that are in New York City, all bridges and tunnels in and out of the city have now been closed by the NYPD. I'm sure security uh, measures uh, to, to be taken if perhaps there are folks that are still in the city that are suspects. Fire stairs are blocking our, our exit. I don't know where the stairs are, but I couldn't get to it. I would want to pass the debris on my own without it. It's nutrition. I have to go to the elevators are blown out. There's a pathway in between. Right, talking to. Uh, uh, in the meantime, let's go back to Jim Dolan uh, as we talk about what's just happened, Jim. And again, uh, another reason for closing the bridges and tunnels, besides the possibility of suspects, Steve, might also be they are concerned about another terrorist attack. Again, we talked earlier about the sim symbolism of the World Trade Center. Let's talk also about how vulnerable some people believe those tunnels to be. Uh, we, we have uh, seen reports uh, over the last several years that the tunnels are very strong. They take an enormous explosion. They're not taking any chances today. After two explosions in the World Trade Center, again, these are symbols of, uh, of American capitalism, of the power of New York and the United States. Right. They don't want to take any chances. Okay, let's go to, to uh, uh, Joe Torres, who's on the phone with us. Joe? Laura, yeah, I'm uh, on a payphone at the corner of Barclay, and bear with me, I can't see too much, West Broadway, uh, standing close, very close to FBI officers, NYPD, who are in touch with the command center and said they have... Uh, an understanding and information, and I don't know if you've reported this because I've been unable to watch the coverage, that another plane is en route towards the both towers. Uh, 
officers left and right running by me away from the building. Uh, we're in a safe location, uh, but as debris continues to uh, to fall from the buildings and flames uh, shoot out the sides, uh, they are on very much a high alert and just looking upwards to see what, if anything, is going to happen. Uh, I can't begin to tell you.